We're here where you've wanted to be. Apparently, everybody wants to go in the shower with somebody living with dementia. Guess who doesn't want to be there? The people living with dementia. Wonder what's going on. All right, I don't know if you can tell or not, but in many shower areas, what's one thing you notice right away about my voice and and uh, what do you what do you notice? Hopefully, it's the echo because when you put when you put tile on floors and on walls, sound bounces back pretty hard and pretty heavy. And then when we add something like. So now I'm going to say things on top of that. And let's say you have a hearing problem. And now you have a hearing problem and there's water running. And I'm going to say, OK, now I need you to sit down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this out of the closet and I'll be right over and I'm going to help you. <clears throat> a lot of people are like, huh? And <laughs> without thinking, you lean in and go, I'm going to help you. <laughs> Now, nobody does that kind of thing on purpose, and nobody means it to be a miserable experience, but let me just say that there's a high possibility that it might surprise you to have water running on you when you didn't anticipate it if I'm in charge of the water on you. Because, it, or if it's coming out of the shower head and it just sort of happens to hit you wherever it's hitting you. And let's just say that this is also like a temperature, and I don't know if it's your temperature, or my temperature, or whose temperature, but water temperature, oh, let's say, oh, what do you think, 90 degrees, 95? Hopefully it's not up over 100, but I can tell you a room temperature at best is somewhere around, uh, I don't know many rooms you can get above 70 something. So if I put water on you and your core is 98.6, the water will get your skin to feel like room temperature in just about no time at all. And what that means is when you have water on your skin, it's freezing, but the water temperature was hot. Ow, you're burning me. Oh my God, I'm freezing. So, and I don't know if you noticed this or not, but if I'm the helper, I'm gonna get wet. So I hope you brought extra clothes. But where did it all start? Well, oh, there she is. <laughs> now, before anybody asks, let me just say, this is Katie. She is the lead of our um, caring, uh, the Creative Care Coalition, or collaboration here in Orange County, North Carolina. She's also the director of Soltis Place, which is our adult day health program. She's also an occupational therapist with lots of years of experience. But right now, she's going to be a person. She's going to represent a person living with dementia who I am trying to convince that she needs to get cleaned up in a certain specific way. And I'm committed to the shower concept because that's what people tell me that people should do. I mean, that's what she's done before. She took... She used to take showers. What time did you take? When did you take your showers usually, Katie? Mm, morning, 7 early morning, 7 a.m. Yes. and every day or? <laughs> Chris says you're hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shucks. Uh, seven. Seven, seven in the morning, every day. Yeah. Every day. So she was an everyday person. So, and that's now, so let's say you're in your 40s, maybe early 50s. Okay, so that's a habit when you're then. Katie doesn't know what her habit's going to be like when she's 80. She has no idea what it's going to be like because she has no idea exactly how dry her skin is going to be, how much weight she might lose and, and subcutaneous fat on her extremities she might have. Um, and yet people around her remember her taking showers at 7 a.m. every morning. That's what Rita, her daughter, would say, you know, every morning, her husband, every morning. And so we have in our mind that ideal time and place of showering. So I might start with instead, hey, Katie, it's Tifa. Hi. Hey, listen, I have the water running. And I wonder if you would help me out by checking temperature. OK. Would you stick your hand in and see what you think? OK. OK, tell you what, let's turn the light on first. Now, notice I got her into the space in two ways. Number one. Hey, Katie, it's Tifa, just a greeting. And then I said, ooh, I have the water running. Now, I have the water running in advance for a couple reasons. 
hot water in a 70 degree room will actually heat the room up a little bit more. And it may heat it so much, especially if I close that door behind us, that it makes it almost like a steam bath. <sighs> so it's warm, it's steamy, which is gonna make it more likely, Katie, if you're warm and steamy, are you more likely to come out of clothes or wanna stay in them? Oh, I'd come out of clothes. She'd come out of clothes. So if the room gets nice and warm, well not, guys, don't get excited and, and please, TikTok, don't shut us down. We're not doing anything. We're just talking. And then instead of taking her immediately to the shower, I took her to the light switch. So I want to give her some things to do before we get anywhere near the shower that are successful things to do. So it's not, I get her in the room and then I get her in the shower. It's not, it's not like a hunt. <laughs> so Katie, go ahead and flip that switch, see if we can get that light on. Ah, well. Um, somebody asked, does lighting affect hallucination? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Does lighting affect hallucination? It absolutely does. Shadows and light, shadow combos and light with, with things. So if you take a look in this space, like go ahead, Amanda, if you want to take a look in there. This is one of the areas we want to change at Soul Test. <laughs> if you're curious if we're going, this is great. We wish we could keep it. It's yeah. not. We hate it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been here a long time. Um, there's lots of problems with it. There's not a in-the-room heat source that really warms us up a lot. We like heat lamps. Uh, we the like the warm floor. space, the tile floor, the also the tile walls, uh, the ridge around high, the big area there with the <laughs> little shower at the one end, uh, and rails, but not an easy way for people to feel real comfortable. Mm -hmm. This is not a real comfortable seating. So one of the things I'm going to do right off is I'm going to take a towel and throw it on the ground. And the reason I'm going to throw it on the ground is nothing makes somebody less comfortable than they already were than having a damp floor that you go to step on and it feels a little slicky and it also may feel cold because tile and water, when it's just splashing on it, doesn't necessarily stay warm. So what I'm going to do now is say, hey, Katie, put your hand in to see what you think. Here. So what do you think? Warm enough or not real? Oh, no. No, not no. for you. Okay, I'm going to turn it up. Let's see if I can get it warmer. Ooh, what did that do? Ooh, cold. That Very got cold. colder, huh? So let's try it the other way. Oh, that's better. What do you better. think of that? Is that, that better? better? Uh -huh. So what I actually did is I took it one way and then the other way because I actually do want Katie to feel like there's something she's doing here that's important for me to understand. Now, how's that feel? On that it? feels good. That feels pretty good? Yeah. Well, tell you what, it's about that time, because you said seven is when you usually do this, right? Yeah. Oh, crap. Well, it's just right after seven. We oh. might be running a little late, but oh. I think you still probably have enough time. Oh. Tell okay. you what, come on over here, and what I'm going to do is let me give you, I'm going to hold up a towel. Uh-huh. So by now, let me just say, we would have for sure had the door shut. <laughs> Um, the whole time. And I would say, I'm going to hold this up. And what I want you to do is go ahead and take your top off and I'm going to wrap this around you. Okay. Now, notice how she said, okay, right away. I still don't know whether she's going to do it or not, but what did I create here, Katie, for you? How's this feel? Privacy. She's got privacy. Now I can see and tell whether she's doing anything. <laughs> I, mean, I get that. The goal here, though, is to give her that sense of privacy. So she feels private. So if she does get out of her, sh her, her sh let's say her dress. I'll take my, I'll just, for she'll take her, she'll take her thing off there. There you go. Oh yeah, that thing's on there. Let's make sure that we don't rip that off. That won't work very well. And I'll hook it back for you. There you go. Oops. Did I hook it? Not quite. Sorry. Thanks for being very tolerant, Katie. Um, while you're doing that, can you talk a little bit about the difference between uh, Wernicke-Korshaw syndrome or alpha related dementia versus regular. Yeah. So I'm going to come back to that. But I, what I will tell you is uh, Wernicke's and Korsakoff's used to be two different variations of a dementia. They both related to somebody who had had alcohol in their life in excess 
to where they classically people would binge drink. And what that meant is they would drink until they passed out and they had alcohol poisoning in their brain. Now, some people are more low level, uh, fun what are called functional drinkers. So they, can, they would drink until they felt no pain. But what that meant was it also made the brain not work very well. And so they didn't actually drink to blackout sessions, but what they did do is drink so much that they caused damage to their brain over time. So what we know about a dementia that's related to alcohol use is it tends to really impact the prefrontal cortex ability to control emotion and to control impulses. So what it means is whenever I'm getting uncomfortable, I have just all of a sudden it can be emotionally, it comes out of a place of um, anger, of frustration, of pain. And so I need a drink. I need a drink right now. But it may translate into drinking, eating a lot of candy uh, or sugar it may translate into uh, not being cooperative or being apathetic about a lot of things. It can also be, if they had to hide their alcohol use, it could be a lot of um, hiding behaviors, not trusting people behaviors, you're out to hurt me, you're trying to trap me, I know what you're doing, I can't trust any of you. Um, also, I would say, in my experience, a lot of families where there's been uh, alcohol-related dementias, there's a lot of history, family history, and emotion that gets in the way. Mm -hmm. um, often, the ability to be um, good at sequencing and following through on things. So sometimes people can be really pleasant until the moment hits, and then it gets to be an unpleasant experience for everybody. Um, but often it's the combination of family dynamics, uh, emotional distress that people get into pretty quick, and the illogic logic uh, and the need to be in control. That will be a big piece of it, as opposed to some other dementias, but not always. All right. So let's say I got Katie down to underwear. Mm -hmm. I don't go any further necessarily. Underwear's fine. I leave it on. Because if, if I would just leave it on, unless she spontaneously starts taking it off, I'm not going to try to get the underwear off. I'll just leave it on and I'll say, tell you what, we're going to wrap you in this. And I actually literally am going to wrap her in this. So can you just for a moment, for uh -huh. people who are just checking in, yeah. people who refuse showers, have you yet asked Katie to take a shower? I have not asked Katie to take a shower at all. We didn't actually talk. I talked about, oh, it's about seven. It's about that time. Check the water temperature. She put her hand in. She felt that was okay. I got her to take her top off, her clothes off, but not her underwear. And we are moving toward that, but I actually haven't said, are you ready for a shower? Nope. <laughs> I didn't say, do you want to take a shower? No. I need you to take a shower. You, Katie, you always take, I didn't say any of those things. I said, it's about seven. Oh, actually, it's a little after. We're running a little late, but you have enough time. I implied a shower, but I haven't demanded anything about a shower. Now, notice, yes, I'm going to sacrifice yet another towel. Two towels have been sacrificed, and she's not even in the shower. And there's going to be more sacrifices made. I am actually going to sacrifice two batches of washcloths. One will be soaked, one will be pre-soaked, and one will not. This is a dry set of washcloths. These are pre-soaked because I don't want to be messing around with finding soap and cleaning washcloths. And if she's really mucky somewhere, I want to be able to drop it and go to another one. So I want a batch of washcloths that are prepped up. These are going to stay dry because here's a place. So Katie will probably, I say, oh, you got your glasses, I'm going to take them off. There you go, good idea. What I'm gonna say is we're gonna put this right here because what we don't want is by any chance water to run into her face. So I've got my dry washcloth just in case. Now, I'll say, tell you what, come on over. I want you to try this and see what you think. Okay, so she's got off, her, her, pan, you know, her pants are off, her shoes are off. 
Now we step on here, which is warm. It may be wet, but it's warm. This is where I might actually throw another towel in there. Let it get soaked, but let her stand on the wet towel. Now I could also use a, um, a backed um, microfiber surface, whatever you want to use, but I don't want tile under her feet. That would include in the tub. I'll put something in the tub if it's a step over. But what we're going to do now is, and as you can see, we would go ahead and say, okay, now put your hand in and see if the temperature's still okay. I'm going to turn it off so that we can, in fact, do this next piece, which is we're going to get in, okay, and we have another towel. There's a towel to sit on, so I might have her sit. I might have her stand depending on her preference. And what we're going to do is here's where hand under hand comes in. And it comes in whether the person physically needs assistance or not. Because what I'm going to do is say, here you go, Katie. Here, tell you what. Go ahead now and here, go ahead and wet one of these. And I want you just right now. Is it is a good wet? Okay, now go ahead and squeeze it out. There you go. Okay, now I want you to wet over here. Now, what did we just do here? <laughs> Katie's hand, I want you to wet over here. I showed her where. I took her hand with the water source to her shoulder. At any moment, if she doesn't like this, she can push it away. And I said, oh, is it too hot? Okay, let's do a little adjustment. There you go. Okay, now over here, now let's get your back. Oh, how's that? Yeah, that's pretty good, huh? Now, what's happening here is the water is hitting the towel. So it's not as fierce, not as sensory intense. The other thing that's happening is it's keeping the warmth of the water in the towel against her skin and keeping her from experiencing air motion on her skin. So how long does it take you to do a shower with all of these? Because we've really broken it down. We broke it down. I mean, I'd be here within three minutes, more than likely. I mean, within three minutes, we'd already be at this place. Mm -hmm. If I hadn't stopped and talked to you guys several times and explained crap, I'd be, we'd be already further along. But you guys keep wanting more information. <laughs> and so, and Katie has this, notice what she has in her other hand. Oh, that washcloth? It's keeping both hands engaged. Now, she hasn't done anything with it yet, but she is doing something with this one, but it's keeping her engaged with me. Mm -hmm. And so we've got this wet, we've got this wet, and now's the time where I could say, Katie, do you want me to keep running the water on your back, or do you want me to just put it over here for a minute? Over here. You got it. And so we hook it down, and it's running down over there onto her feet. Okay, so she's still getting the water, but not necessarily up here. And this is where I grab that soapy cloth and I say, okay, now scrub up there. And I say, now, do you want to take your bra off? Or you want to leave it on? Just leave it on. Okay, you're fine. Okay, switch out. Here you go. Switch. Do this one. There you go. Excellent. Okay, under here. There you go. Nice. And now step out. There you go. And, and get right here. There you go. Excellent. Nice job, lady. All right, we've hit the high spots. Tell you what, let's rinse off. Now the water is still running. I do not turn the water off during this because I don't want to stop start another sensory experience. So we get it down and we start and with Katie and me, we're rinsing. And that's when I'll say, I'm gonna let this drop, I'm gonna get you a dry one. Okay, because we've got our rinse. Now, if she washed her pits and they were really gross, we have a second one. <laughs> if she washes her crotch and it's like, ooh, brown stuff. <laughs> you know, that's where we're making that. Okay, there you go. Go ahead and put that around your shoulders. Nice. Ooh, yeah. Okay, now here's another one. And so I bring another one. Okay, now let's do your armpits. There you go. We're done. That's the shower. This is, I'm not soaping all over her body. This is that recognition. Where did I need to get to? Pits and crotch and boobs. And are you also doing sort of an assessment of I absolutely like, what are you am. Looking, when you're looking at someone, where are the like high spots that you would be looking what at? What am I looking at? I'm looking at her feet. I'm looking at her legs to see, do I have edema? Do I need to, any skin areas that I need to be worried about? 
I'm looking at when she's doing that cleaning in that crotch in the front, does she reach back far enough or do I say, hey, Katie, let me get your back here. And when I do that, I'm also getting down further. Now notice my hand at the shoulder, which is another reason I want more washcloths to be able to apply. And I'm coming from behind, but you have fewer sensors sensory information intake systems from the back end. And so she'll tolerate me doing a lot of touching here. I want to make sure that when I'm touching, it's this kind of touching, not this kind of fiddly touching. <laughs> huh, Katie? Yeah. And again, I'm not messing with her hair this trip. Whether she needs it or not, I'm not messing with her hair. I'm not getting her face wet, her head wet. I'm not going there because I just want to, I want to get the high spots. How would you help someone get their neck rolls? Uh, getting neck rolls. So what I'm going to do is if we do neck rolls, I will do hand under hand and I'll go, hey, Katie, can you look up for me? Good job. There you go. You got it. You got it. Good. Now, if she can't extend her head, she can't do that. What I'll say is, Katie, look look over there. There you go. And I'll work on getting the ones to this side. And then I'll say, look at me. There you go. Good work, lady. You got it. OK? So we're going to pause there, because that was covering a fair amount of territory. Thank you, Katie. I'm, you managed to stay dry. Amanda <laughs> didn't do that when I did her one time. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to pause now and see if we have some questions coming in. Because, yes, Katie was co cooperative, but part of the reason Katie was cooperative is I didn't set up situations for argument. Yeah, there's a lot of questions about people who are just already starting swinging or violent before mm -hmm. the weekend. So I'm not going to bring them in the shower area. Because if they're already feeling that way about this space, it's about the space and previous life experience. These people, whether we label it or not, have post-traumatic stress disorder. They have a post-traumatic, this has been in a traumatic place, a traumatic event, a traumatic care routine for them due to their dementia, due to life histories, due to um, possibly a, an experience as a child, a young adult, someone took control and hurt them or harmed them or took advantage of them in a secured space and held them. Um, or the sensory experience in here is so intense, they can't tolerate it. So if that's the case, we're out of here. There is no point in using this environment to induce distress in another human being. That's not care. And we need to get better at saying time out. There is not magic in a shower. There is value in helping someone get clean. So how, what would you recommend then? Rather than coming in here, where would you do something Okay, well, like let's, let's sort of start. Let's try another room and see. Yeah. You've For seen here, you've been here. PTSD. Come this way. And let's just see if, just curious, follow us along. <clears throat> Does this space seem less traumatizing? And for some people, the answer is going to be yes, because there isn't a stall. There isn't a, there isn't a box that people put you in. There isn't something that's really scary. And maybe still toileting is still okay for the person. If that's the case, then what we're going to work on is a wash up at the sink. That's all we're going to do. We're going to get a chair in here. We're going to mess with the sink. We're going to do just upper body washing. Uh, we're not going to try to use that space. And it means I got to let go of this idea of showering. What about like a foot bath in the living room? Or I often together? start with a foot bath in the living room. I mean, that's one of the things I'll do because that's pretty open space. That's a little less scary. And so I'll start with something really simple. You could do long sit in bed too. Yeah, we could do the bed. We could do it, you know. But let's say we're sitting here and Katie's in the chair. And it's not everybody that just like showers. No, people are asking. It's not everybody no, that not everybody. A lot of people when they get into when they get to what we call amber state, where senses sensory experiences get extreme for the people. Um, or even emerald when they're not emerald understanding when they, they, they don't have. understand the steps and the sequence. Um, people can quite honestly all of a sudden develop adverse reactions to the sensory experience of water hitting their body. Uh, some of it's because they can't see the water, they can't figure the water out. Um, sometimes it's because of how we're trying to offer the care because I'm doing things to people. And after a little bit of that, their brain is like, I am done. And we didn't use hand under hand as a technique to start with. We're trying to do to, not with. 
And once people have that in their brain, in the primitive brain, it can be really, really difficult and maybe never possible to get rid of it. For somebody like Katie, one might go, oh, hey, Katie, it's Tifa. How Hi. are you? Good. You look good. Well, thank you. Ooh. Except, tell you what, take your shoe off. I want to look at something. Now, notice that I did not touch her shoe at all. And I would say then, tell you what, pull your sock down, because I think I noticed something. So she would pull her sock down, and I would say, ooh, may I? You have, now, what did you notice I just did here? What did I do, Katie? Oh, you put my foot on your thigh. I put my foot, her foot on my thigh, because I want her to have support under her foot for anything I do with her body. If I have her hand and I'm handing, handling her foot, that's a really intense sensory experience. So what is I, I did is I created a stable place for her to put her foot. And I might just say, you know what? You've got really dry skin. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, how about if I put a little lotion? Oh, that'd be nice. Okay. And I say, feel this. See, is that, what do you think? Mm. Smell it? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Oh, nice. Here we go. Now, what I'm actually assessing is how does she tolerate my touch? Because she seemed, what do you think? Is she doing okay with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I'm going to come down here and I might even try some lotion here and lotion here. Mm -hmm. And then I might try, now notice how I switched. And now I'm using my forearm and coming behind. So I'm going to touch out here at the most sensitive part of the feet. But what I'm doing is creating a lot of pressure upward. And her brain's a little tricked, mm -hmm. which is real different than if I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm creating this. And then I'm doing this. And I'm saying, Pull your, bring your shirt. Yeah, there you go. Pull it up just a little bit. Good. Now, what am I finding out about her comfort with me touching her even higher? Mm -hmm. So far, she's okay. So far, she's okay. And I say, you know what might feel really good? Hmm. A foot soak. Mm. Can we try one? Yeah. Now notice the whole time I'm saying this, I have my hand on my knee with her foot in my elbow and I'm giving her tension upward. So I'm creating a fair amount of tension there because I want her to feel really safe and really secure. I'm giving her a lot of pressure. It's called proprioceptive input. And it tends to be something that causes people to, <sighs> that feels good. And so when I do that, then what I could do is say, here, put it, put your foot in there. What do you think? Mm. Ooh. And now you've also bought yourself a little bit of mm -hmm. time. I have. Because that'll feel good for a little bit. That'll feel for a little bit. And I might say, you know what, Katie? Let me see your arms here. Because I think they're, pull your sleeve up if you would. You know what? And this is where I might suggest, tell you what, let me give you something to put over yourself. Let's get this out of the way. I don't want to get any lotion on it. And then what I can do is do this kind of thing. Now, notice I'm holding the hand. How far up her arm is she letting me go? Pretty far. Right up there. Pretty far. And if she didn't have this in the way, I would go on up further. And I'd say, ooh, you know what? I'm going to just put a little bit up on the back of your neck because that's dry too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what I'm doing is like it's like going on the first date. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty, pretty good date. Mm -hmm. I mean, because what's happening here is I started on Katie's preferred side. I didn't mention that yet, but that's really important to notice too. I'm on her right-hand side, which is the side that she feels most comfortable about stuff on. I'm doing it first. I did the leg, the foot, you know, I did the arm and the hand, and then I did the back of the neck. What I'm doing is getting her to feel my touch and see if she's okay with how I feel and what I what it feels like for me to touch her. And all these touches are flat palm touches. None of these are using fingertips and none of these are light moving touch. <laughs> Which again, it seems so obvious to people like me who've done this a long time that of course I would do that. But if you're nervous about touching people and you're trying to be light touching, <laughs> unfortunately, Katie, that's a real reaction. Oh, huh? my God. <laughs> and Katie's been really tolerant, but all of a sudden it's just I like, I can't it. stand that. Mm. Because light moving touch goes to the primitive brain as um, something you need to really be careful about because it could be an insect. It could be something that's going to get you and bite you or 
you know, it's trying to move on you and it's giving you all those little messages of acute distress. And so this includes when we're trying to be sweet with people and we fuss with their hair or fuss with them. This is, <laughs> and it's like they're flinching and it's like, <laughs> but Katie, tickled by my Katie, four other brothers. Katie, no. Katie, and then I chase her. <laughs> So if we're going to do this kind of thing, this is the kind of thing where if you're going to do something, the tips of the finger, (laughs) I stabilize and yeah, it may mess her hair up, but I can guarantee she likes that kind of touch a lot better. Um, And this is where, you know, if you want to do some rubbing back and forth like that. And what do you notice about my voice too? That's that, Mm. the rhythm of my voice too. So Katie. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) So um, we're almost done. Thank you yeah. to everyone who's come with us. But um, people are asking, like, can we get Tifa? How, how do we get you guys? Or, or is there anything that and helps solve the world show? Like, you can have her. You can have her. <laughs> so um, how do people find you or Solta's Place where they can yeah. donate? So if you go to, if you put in Soltis Place, one word, dot com, you will find our website. And we do have the opportunity to, in, to basically make donations there. Um, we also have, we're working on the, the website for the Creative Care Co- a Coalition. I keep wanting to say collaborative. No, it is collaborative. It is collaborative. It is collaborative. Coalition collaborative. We talked about both. And so I'm having trouble remembering which one we decided on. But for me, you can you can check out Solta's Place because I'm I'm available there, but I'm also on tipasnow.com. Um, you can find me there. You can go to info at tipasnow.com and find out more stuff there, ask questions there. It's called an email. Um, yeah, sorry. I know TikTok. We take messages on TikTok too. And we try to get back, but yeah. man, you guys you have a lot of messages. You're faster typers than I am, that's for sure. And with your thumbs, which I have other skills. That's not it. But I hope tonight was an opportunity to explore this thing called showering in a slightly different way, because I think people living with dementia are trying to send us a lot of messages. And I think, unfortunately, we have in our mind showers are essential. And it's just a bad habit, (laughs) frankly. And we need to offer opportunities that are acceptable. And the sooner we can get that to happen, the more likely it is we can help people stay clean longer with less distress for everybody. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about having to take two or three people into a shower area or into a care situation and have incidents. Um, Because I truly believe a lot of what we do is triggering the part of the brain that says, you're trying to hurt me and I can't trust you anymore, which is a horrible place to be when you're naked and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's our show. Thanks, everybody. (laughs) Thank you, Katie. Thanks, Amanda. (laughs) And thanks to you guys for tuning in. I hope it was helpful. Please continue. People can find it on YouTube if they missed it. Oh, yeah. We have a YouTube channel. So if you go to Tipa Snow YouTube on YouTube, YouTube. (laughs) I mean, it's just our channel on YouTube. It's just my name. Keep it simple. And you will find a recording of this. Uh, Unfortunately, Sunday night. the power went out and we didn't get to keep it. So, but tonight this one should be fine. Amanda will turn off her phone before it all goes out and she'll be able to make the recording available. So till next time, thank you all. (laughs) Hi, I'm Tifa Snow and you just found our YouTube channel and watched one of our videos. I'm the owner and founder of Positive Approach to Care. Thanks for watching. And if you liked If you have a comment about, or you would, please share it with people you know. Oh, and if you haven't yet done it, consider subscribing. We'll let you know when the next new video comes out. And you might want to visit our website, www.tipasnow.com, where you'll find other resources as well. See you there.